Hey everypony, it's your boy Mutely, making more videos. Please help me learn how to make good video intros. I know I already talked about a Roborus lock in my previous video, but I figured I could give a little more information about it instead of just leaving it at this is my D&D comic, have fun. It starts out with Dabrian and Mutely in their very fantasy world, and their specific world is called Carceris. Now Carceris is a little bit of a nightmare, so we're gonna have a lot of explaining to do about how it works. There's this large belt on Carceris making two separate halves of the planet, and this belt has big big chains on either end of it that hold the sun and the moon. Originally, the sun and moon were meant to be moved along the belt to create the day and night cycles that we all know and love. However, thousands and thousands of years ago, the sun and moon just stopped moving. Now certain parts of the world are eternally day, night, or anything in between. Now Mutely, how do you even keep track of time on that messed up planet? Good news, there's a way to track that. Carceris has a much smaller moon that isn't chained to the planet. This moon is called Herring, and it circles the planet like normal, making a complete day cycle for the people living down on Carceris. Even then, it's gotta be so hard to keep track of the day since nothing gets brighter or darker, so there's specialized jobs some people have to watch the moon and keep track of the days officially. And I don't know about you, but I would love to get paid to stare at the moon. But mutely, you're asking again. How does anyone live on a planet where weather would be completely ruined by the sun and the moon staying still? Well, we have a whole god to make the weather work, so it's okay. He doesn't control temperatures, though, so, uh, yeah, it would be so, so hot under the sun and so, so cold under the moon. Anyway, here are the six regions of Carceris. The land directly in between the sun and the moon is what we would call the life belt. These are the most comfortable temperatures to live in, so it holds a large amount of the world's population. On the land, this region is called Faunera. A very diverse amount of people, plants, and animals live here. In the water is our second region, Altamura. This is for people and creatures that live in communities underwater and sometimes on islands. And since this is fantasy-based, there's a lot more than just humans. There's guys you can just have conversations with that live in the water. Life is so cool here. Closer to the sun is a region called Quatorum. This area would be like eternal summer. It's very uncomfortable if you're not used to the constant heat, but it's still very accessible to life that has adapted to hot conditions. Opposite of this would be Toradim, locked in eternal night and winter. Like Quatorum, you wouldn't want to live here if you weren't used to the cold, but there's still plenty of people living here that were built for low temperatures. Sometimes if towns in Quatorum or Toradim are close enough to Faunera, they'll say bro. It's kind of dawn or dusk, bro. What if, um, what if we could barely see the sunlight on the horizon, and we were both boys and we kissed? Now our last two regions are where things get really silly. Directly under the sun is Sol's Domain. This part of the world is constantly being baked by the sun, so there's no water and it's very rare to see anyone or anything living here. The same goes for the Umbra. This is the region directly under the moon. It's so dark in the Umbra that even creatures with dark vision can't see without a light source. Almost nothing can survive living here because of the intense cold. But that's not to say nothing can live in these two regions. There's still a few specially adapted civilizations in Sol's Domain in the Umbra, but you're not going to want to visit if you weren't born and raised there. Do you remember Mr. Weather God? Because there's more of those too. Well, not, not more Weather Gods specifically, just more gods in general. There are ten main gods, one minor god, and tons of lesser gods that aren't very important to our comic. The ten months of the year on Carceris are actually named after each main god, and they all have 30 days each, just like every month should. I'm gonna be real honest, I still don't know how many days are in each real month. I don't feel like I was educated very well. That's basically all of our basic knowledge for Carceris, though. We still have a ton of other development, though, like governments, specific town information, specific god information, fantasy races that we've changed and added to, wildlife, and a lot more. I have been losing my mind trying to organize all of this with my friend. We're trying to come up with holidays, too, and this is far too complicated. But it's still tons of fun. I super very much recommend just overdeveloping everything you make. But it'll be a lot easier when we're just focusing on Dab and Mutely, the main characters of Ouroboros Lock, on their first quest, hunting for magic organs. They will be coming across some of our other main characters, Ida and Charlie, and from there we'll be able to expand into our secondary characters. We never actually figured out what to call the secondary characters though, like 
teachers or predecessors? Who cares, they're gonna be in the comic and it'll be all sorts of fun. And not fun. We're excited for all the problems that everyone causes. And if you're interested in knowing more about Carcer for the comic, let me know. I have a very bare list of video ideas to make right now, so anything would help. I'll also leave all of my art and social media links in the description. Thanks for watching!